We're here to talk about worms, roundworms to be specific, and how coffee or caffeine might actually help them live a longer life. Okay, there's one big glaring problem. You are not a worm, and if you are, it's pretty cool that you're using YouTube, but kudos to you. Anyhow, what am I talking about here? There was a study that was published in Longevity and Healthspan that found that via some specific pathways, mainly FOXO, which I'll explain in just a second, caffeine actually improved lifespan. Now, what does that have to do with you as a human? Well, if we start backing up and we look at the ways that we induce FOXO in human models or that we've seen it, hmm, it actually might make some sense that coffee or caffeine potentially during a fast might even improve some of the longevity attributes of that fast to begin with. A lot of this is hypothesis, but that's a lot of what I do is I look at connecting the dots because I like to forward think. Let's dive in. And if you haven't already, check out Thrive Market down below in the description. There's a special link for you to try them out. So when it comes to fasting, when it comes to keto or any kind of different dietary pattern, they're an online membership-based grocery store. So they have really interesting, cool things that you normally would have to like scour all kinds of different health food stores for, but it gets delivered right to your doorstep. So I use them all the time, but I also have specific things that I recommend. So it's kind of like going grocery shopping with me. So anyhow, if you're doing any kind of intermittent fasting regimen or keto or anything, you want to check them out. There's a special link for you to use down below just because you're a viewer of this channel. They're a big supporter of this channel. Big thank you to Thrive Market for the continued support. So check them out after this video. Let's keep this kind of simple. Okay, so what the study ultimately looked at was what's called FOXO. FOXO is sort of a secondary longevity gene. Okay, FOXO has been demonstrated in fasting models to help induce autophagy, which we know autophagy is a great thing, right? We are recycling components of cells and organelles to ultimately create a stronger body. It's like when we fast, we go through survival of the fittest. Well, FOXO is a gene that regulates a lot of that. Additionally, FOXO has some very powerful antioxidant properties within the body. So it scavenges some of the reactive oxygen species, but more so it like kind of protects the cell from these reactive oxygen species. Believe it or not, when we are fasting, we actually induce a lot of stress on the body and we actually increase some overall reactive oxygen species because the body's under stress. Well, you know what it does as a response to stress? It upregulates natural antioxidant components, capabilities. So the stress of fasting makes us more resilient. We're all about resiliency here. But where does caffeine come in? Well, through some various expressions, caffeine activates the same FOXO. So in this particular study in longevity and health span, they found, okay, if we gave roundworms caffeine, it improved their FOXO expression, which is something that we work very hard to do with fasting. Okay, let me explain a little bit about how this works. I'm gonna go tiny bit biochemistry and bio, uh, kind of like genetics here. Okay, there's this thing called a sirtuin. Okay, sirtuins get activated when we fast or when we go through caloric restriction. Okay, sirtuins are like this, I'm just gonna call it an activator. What they do is when our body senses that we are deprived of energy, food, it activates this activator. And this activator goes around and it unlocks fat from our stored tissue, energy, and it opens up new power plants. It's like a serial entrepreneur inside of our body. It finds a way to open up more shops and open up more power plants and find ways to get currency and get fuel into those power plants. It's really pretty amazing. And it's all as a response to, you guessed it, stress. When we're stressed out and we're deprived and devoid of energy, the body finds a way to make lemonade from lemons, period. And one of these things that sirtuins activate just so happens to be FOXO. Well, then we have this separate study that finds that caffeine might express FOXO through a different pathway, independent of sirtuins. Hmm, so the weirdo in me starts going, all right, I like my coffee when I'm fasting. And I have a lot of reasons to say that it's pretty good, right? Mobilization of fat, a little bit more catecholamine response, a little bit more AMPK, a little bit more energy, maybe some more fat burning during my fasted workouts. But wait a minute, now you're telling me that I might be able to also activate this FOXO even more so? Again, 
no specific study being done in this given category, but we take two independent things that we know. And cool fact, this is what we do with science. Okay? We have one result here, one result here, and we say, hey, Bob, I like your study. Hey, Jim, I like your study too. Hey, let's investigate more and learn more. We don't come to a concrete conclusion. We continue to challenge that hypothesis. So my interpretation of this is, wow, even though I'm consuming a couple calories from coffee during my fast, it is expressing more of the genes that I personally am after. So Thomas's sort of hypothesis in this, and take this for what it's worth, is that if you have a small amount of coffee throughout the course of your fast, you may be able to get more of that benefit that you're looking for as far as you know, reactive oxygen species, but also potentially even sirtuin activation because you're upregulating things more, you're speeding up the process. I'm all about looking at fasting from a longevity aspect. How can I get more out of my life? How can I feel the age that I am now for as long as possible? In, you know, within reason. And fasting until recently has really been the way that I've really done that anyway. But now I'm finding ways to level it up. So what I would recommend is some kind of low acid coffee that's really not having a negative pH effect on your body, something that's fairly neutral, like maybe a cold brew, or a lot of times I recommend like Jot coffee because it's super smooth, uh, things like that. I would not recommend going for some coffee that you're burning all the time, like through a Keurig and stuff like that, simply because then you're having other compounds that are coming in. The purer the coffee, the better. And you want to have that coffee maybe 30, 40 minutes after you wake up. You don't want to have it right when you wake up. And I've talked about that before. That has to do with cortisol values. Okay, Our cortisol levels start to come down in the morning, and, or they start up high, and then they come down. You want to have that coffee when your cortisol levels are a little bit lower, so you're not driving cortisol even higher. Okay, Because cortisol might blunt some of these positive effects that we're after to a degree. Okay, And then what you want to do is you can continue to sip on it throughout the course of the day, but you want to cut it off after, say, 12 p.m. or 11 a.m. Okay, and if you wanted to switch over to green tea, you're absolutely welcome to because the benefit from this FOXO doesn't seem to be related just to coffee. Coffee has other benefits with like chlorogenic acid and all this, but you could also switch and get an effect from green tea as well. Anyhow, as always, I wanted to give you a little bit of a pragmatic kind of application to be able to utilize so you get something out of this video, but of course, the science is power and that's what's gonna arm you with what you need to get the most out of your life. I'll see you tomorrow.